Hey guys, how's it going? So Erin and I are gearing up, actually setting up, for our second annual container planting competition. We are down at our church. We decided since we just got all of those brand new pots to put on along our fence line that we would give our church the self-watering containers, plant them up and set them around down here. We thought it would make it look really pretty. Plus, I think commercial applications are really good for self-watering because when you have pots, you have to water every day. I mean, there's not somebody here every single day of the week. Um, so if you can stretch the amount of time between watering or maintenance, it's just, it's ideal. Um, so I'm excited for this year's competition. We're only doing 10 pots today. I still have bulbs in four of the pots at home uh, that I need to move into the landscape. So we may plant those up and bring them down later. But what I learned from last year, Aaron plants a lot less in containers than I do. I tend to pack stuff out. And I learned that if you give plants room to grow, that they actually flourish and they do really well, sometimes better. My favorite container of all 14 was one of his. It was, what do you have in there? An orange rocket, Nephophia, uh -huh. which you're using, the yeah. same one. He, he wintered that one over and he's got it in a pot down here that he's gonna use again. Uh, and then like Super Tunia Honey and there was just like, um, I can't remember, a Super Bells. It was really, everything was very autumnal in color and I really liked it. But here's our setup. We've got the cleaned out pots. This side right here is Aaron's stuff. We'll give you a quick overview. Lots of pretty color. And then these are mine right here. You're going down. No way. Downtown. No way. <laughs> so I think we're ready to roll. Okay. Actually, I think you should plant the first one. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 hold on. So we did, we drained these recently and I took out all the overflow plugs, right? This, no. No, that's not the this overflow. This is a soil reservoir plug. That's just the drainage plug. Drainage plug. I put it, I put it back in this one. So every container we need to remember to put that back. Otherwise it ceases to become a self-watering container. So here's your, your juices here. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay. What do you got? My first container, uh, and I'm only doing this because it's a baller combination recipe rather. Recipe. I am doing the above and beyond combo with super tunia Vista, Vista bubblegum. Supertunia Vista Silverberry and Supertunia Vista. Hold on. You got it. It's this one. Hold on. Uh, it's uh, an F. It's fuchsia. Yes. Yes. I chose it because you can't lose. <laughs> That's true. He will win with this container. It just is one of those combos that every year you plant it, it just goes crazy and all you see are blooms. Maybe it's a lazy choice. No. But, but also just guaranteed like, to win. Guaranteed. Choice. Yeah. <laughs> now I want to know how many you're actually using in this container are you packing it out no because these will go crazy so i'll probably want um, you've got like 10 in there or something yeah right? i'll probably end up using six or seven okay. plants so let's see here there's three of them if i do um if i do three bubble gum two vista fuchsia and two silverberry or would you do three of all i don't think i would do three of all in this one i think that would be a bad choice this is going to be perfection when i'm done okay bubble gum and then yep yep boom are you gonna help me plant is that cheating if i help you plant i get some like bonus points added to mine that's okay all right this one is just gonna look good it, it will it, like, you it can't, honestly just can't doesn't it doesn't even matter where you put these plants in this pot they'll look yeah. good in either way okay okay so we got to move this one out and bring a pot in for me there you go Not messing around. <laughs> That's how I live my life. <laughs> okay, for my first combination, I really enjoyed the one that I used a lot of red in last year, just because it was so out of my wheelhouse. Yeah, it was awesome though. Like it really pushed me until we got that really bad storm. <laughs> it kind of set everything back. I just really thought it was pretty. So this is my first combination of plants here. My, my centerpiece, I'm using, I'm using quite a number of super bells. So I'm gonna go kind of big on my centerpiece because super bells don't get as big. These get massive. You're doing three? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I like how I say, I learned that you don't have to put as many plants in a container last year. <laughs> but I'm gonna put just as many in. Well, but like I explained- Do them. you want my help planting? <laughs> Why don't you just rest? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think that will be a butamus. And I'm kind of actually pushing them out a little bit. You see, I don't, I'm not like putting them right in the center. Mm -hmm. 
It's my strategy. Okay. Okay. Uh, next plant is a Supertunia honey right here. And then we've got Superbell's red right there. Oh, well, that's pretty. Isn't that pretty? And this is a Superbell's tropical sunrise like that. Wow. And I was going to do three of each, but you know what? I think I'm just going to do two of each. So I am going to scale it back a little bit. So if I do like halvesies yeah. like that, I think that that will be perfect. Oh, that's going to be really nice. Well, I like the, I think the blue in there too kind of makes it interesting. Yeah. Well, on, when you're starting with plants that look like this, like that's hard to, hard to lose with that. That's so you're, you're okay with super bells and super tunias? Not, not normally, but here's my thinking. I'm not taking care of these this year. The groundskeeper here is amazing. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm excited to see, cause you're, I think I see you're doing some super bells with super tunias too. I think if I'm not the one taking care of them, maybe somebody else is better at it than I am. <laughs> I just don't typically have luck with super bells and super tunias. Um, but I think in self watering cases, you're better off anyway. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Because well, we had okay luck last year. Cause yeah, there was a couple that, that the, my had, favorite one of yours had yeah. a mix of this and probably something akin to that. So I think, yeah. Cause if they're getting consistency and not like deluged by a human, yeah. I think human. Uh... So here's what I think. I think that with self-watering containers, plants do better because with self-watering, it forces the roots to dig down for water, mm -hmm. which, which, you know, if your plant has more root system, it's going to naturally be able to survive more. So I think it's, I think self-watering helps plants get bigger. Yeah, I think you're right. And it eliminates the uh, opportunity to screw up something yeah. on the Human well, level. if you if you have a drip system that's just right on the top and it gets water every single day just on the top, um, there's really no encouragement for the roots to go down because it's getting the water right at the right at the soil surface. Now, isn't that pretty? That's pretty from the beginning. Yeah, I like well, that. so is yours. Okay. Take it away. Yep. Okay, for my next container, I'm bringing something back from last year that was an awesome perennial and it survived. We kept it in the greenhouse mm -hmm. and it, it was awesome. It looks awesome now. So this is, what is it, Orange Blaze? I thought it was Orange Rocket, but I think it's Orange Blaze. Orange Blaze, Red Hot Poker. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what this one does this year mm -hmm. because it looked great last year. Well, and it's like starting to baby out. <laughs> Yeah. Like it's starting to spread, so you might have like amazing show. We did have to deadhead this just a little bit last year, yeah. but like twice. I think it looked awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get this sucker out of here. I don't think we need all of that soil. Well, well, that's <laughs> there it what is we're anyway. getting. Oh, look at that! It's not quite straight, but I think this will look good though. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's kind of fun to have something that yeah. you had from last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, my next plants. I have a Supertunia really red. Not just red. Really red. It's really red. <laughs> I have a Super Bells Dreamsicle, which is cool. And I have Flambe Yellow. Oh, I'm excited about that one in particular. Yeah, I think that's a cool combination. These two look an awful lot like the two I just put in, but that'll make it look way different. Yeah, this is going to look really good. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Two Flambe, two Really Red, two okay. Dreamsicle. I'm so afraid that I'm going to break the the plant as I'm handling them. Yeah. It seemed to just kind of... Well, it comes with practice. I suppose. Yeah. This is uh, Nufofia is a little wild. That looks really good from my angle. I yeah. think the blue too, the blue leaves set it, set this plant off in particular. Yeah, this is going to be great. So for my next container, I'm actually going to be doing a coleus as my centerpiece, which is a little risky yeah because these are going to be i think we're going to cluster most of these pots up close to a building to where they're semi-protected um but i am going to be planting three even though these get big this is a color blaze wicked hot um yeah 18 to 24 inch spacing i have a like i think it's a legitimate concern of wind mm. because coleus are pretty fragile to wind and so i'm thinking my thinking of using three because i know it's an overreaction is that if the wind takes part of one of them out I'll still have a centerpiece left. Yeah. Um, and these are supposed to be able to take both sun and shade and we tried them out um, last year along with some others in that kind of condition and they did really well. So I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be perfect and I'm loving what they're gonna, going to be planted with. I think it's all, they're all pretty colors. Okay, next plants are Superbina Peachy Keen. 
Super Bells Coralina. This is one of my favorite Super Bells. Love the color. And then Super Tunia Honey, which I've been using a lot of this year because it's got such a unique look to it. Don't you think that's gonna be pretty? That's a really good combo. I love it. I really like these uh, Super Bina. Yeah, they're nice plants. They're really um, resilient, it seems like. Kind of forget about Super Binas when you know, we're like planting containers. Well, and they're not bugged by budworms like Super Bells and Super Tunias. Yeah, that's the other thing, you guys. So we get budworms really bad in our area, which um, they're little moths. They have little green caterpillars that they lay their eggs like in the buds of the plants and then they hatch and then they eat their way out of the buds to where you have no flowers left on your plant and or flowers that are full of holes. Um, so we have to spray with something called BT or thuricide, Bacillus thuringiensis is what it is. It's actually, uh, natural soil, it's like a bacteria found in the soil that the caterpillars consume and it kills them, etc. It's not harmful to honeybees, but we have to spray our super bells and super tunias with that every year. And we're starting that preventative spray this week, just so you guys know. Like we are gonna be spraying our plants on a weekly basis so we don't deal hopefully with that. It's just problem. easier to do it before they're a problem. Yeah, because once they're a problem, they are hard. Although hard they do come do. back. We did a video a couple years ago showing yep how quickly your plants will rebound they do. after you spray, but you don't even want to have that lull. I mean, you have, you spend all this money on the plants and you have such a short season to enjoy them. You don't want to miss like three weeks of bloom. Right. So, okay. This looks great. Thanks. Okay. For this one, I am starting with a purple fountain grass, classic. Me to plant it? Sure. <laughs> it's just the- uh, This one's root bound right here. Oh, yeah. Unless it looks like this, we don't usually tease the roots, but this one, wow. we'll like snatch it a little bit. Okay, next one is uh, Supertunia Black Cherry. This one's nice. I like, the, I like the red. Cool side of red though. You can yeah. put it with pink. All right, and then, um, uh, I was gonna say Supertunia Snow Princess. <laughs> this is a Lobularia Snow Princess, which doesn't look like much now, but man, these get huge. Yeah, they do, and full of bloom. Yeah, so it's full of buds. It like, just needs some time buds. in the sun. They're all buds. They're yeah. not. Those aren't spent blooms. And then um, the next one is Superbell's Cardinal Star, which um, I can't recall ever. Like, have I never you planted have. this one? Nope. Yeah, that's our town colors. It's my just high school a colors. Really interesting looking. Cardinal and bloom. corn. Cardinal and corn. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I think we should just do two and two okay. and, and two. If there was a national planting competition where you you traveled somewhere to see how fast you could plant plants, would you compete? Would you enter yourself? No. If there was an Olympics for planting? <laughs> no. I have a feeling that I you would, would want to compete. No, I think that you would you would want to compete. You think I'm competing with you right now? Uh, I'm I think, helping you. I think you compete all the time. All right. Looks good. That's an interesting blend with the two reds. Yeah. I'm excited to see that one come together. Hopefully it, it, they don't fight together. I don't think so. For my next pot, I'm doing the Skyrocket Penicetum, which I adored this grass. I had it in one of, was it in one you of mine? You do like it, don't you? I think it looks sparkly with the white It's leaves. a good looking grass. Yeah. So that's the centerpiece. And then I'm using this interesting blend of colors. So we've got Supertinia Vista Fuchsia, right? Yeah. Supertinia Black Cherry and Supertinia Bordeaux. Oh man. Won't that be nice? Do you think the cher cherry will get swallowed up? No, because I think Bordeaux and cherry grow about the same. Don't you think? No. I Bordeaux feel like Bordeaux is almost like a vista. You could almost call Bordeaux a vista. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. 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 This is the most glorious Bordeaux ever in, in, a, a, container. in a container. For my next container, I am going to start with Truffula Pink Gomfrina. This is a beast. We found that out last it's year. It's stinky. It's stinky when it's planted in mass. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to decide how many to plant. I think I'm going to go with my gut and do one. Okay. And then I'm excited about these. You don't like these, do you? I just, I am not a huge fan of striped blooms. I think they look like a mess. Okay. I like them. I think that they're cool. So hey, this is um, Supertunia Mini Vista Violet Star. So they're calling these mini vistas instead of charms? Or is that so different? So mini vistas will grow like a beast then. Right. Yeah. 
There are many, so they've got a Vista habit, but they're many blooms, right. like a charm. That's what it is. Yeah. So it's like mini blooms, but still Vista, like massive, big. Yeah. Okay, well, so good to know, huh? here's the first one, which yep. is Violet Star, Mini Vista Violet Star. And then this one is Mini Vista Pink Star, which seems like it ought to go with the other one. Yeah. Um, and then the last plant is uh, Supertunia Magenta. Got to bring a little weight. Yeah, with Royal Magenta. With a solid, blocky color. This one's kind of a beast, too, in our experience. Yeah, that's a good one. Was it two years ago that we planted this? Yes. In the hay racks? Hay racks and, they, and the barn pots. It was yeah. beautiful. They got really, really big. So that'll be a fun one, too. Yeah. So let's do, since they're so big, let's just do the same okay. six plants. Mm -hmm. How'd I do? Great. Great job. It actually looks like, I'm going to admit, that it looks fun. It is fun. And I the guess, truffle like, do you think that, like, take our 14 pots, for example. Do you think you could put that in all 14? No. And enjoy it? No. I think it would look like, oh my gosh. No, this is like a one-off. Maybe like in a small setting, I could handle it. Yeah. So not to be redundant. Oh, you're doing it again? But I'm using one more. Yeah, I actually thought about using your extra truffles there instead. But I think having a few grasses here and there, it there adds some drama, I think, the vertical interest. I like it. I think that, like, if I were, if I had to pick between this and Purple Fountain now, I would probably pick this really? one. Really? That's kind of your standby? Yeah, I don't know. I, maybe it's just because I'm in moon garden phase and it's got white in the leaves. And I might use more plants in this one. This is a Laguna Ultraviolet La, uh, Lobelia, which I am really interested to see how these do in this container because I don't traditionally have really good luck with Lobelia in our hot, dry climate. So I am going to pack this one a little fuller just in case we have issues with them. Um, and that way the other plants can kind of maybe take over. Mm -hmm. That's my, my thought process. But I really think they're a beautiful plant and I would love them to survive and do really good. What if, what if they suffer because you didn't give enough root space? There's plenty of root space. Okay. <laughs> I think it has to do with moisture okay. and humidity. Okay. Uh, next one is Superbell's Grape Punch, which is one of my favorite, well, I always say that. Superbell's Coralina is one of my favorite. But I love the Grape Punch because it's almost got like a huge, it's like a bigger than a Supertunia Charm Bloom. Yeah. And it has a dark throat that I think is really pretty. So we're going to use three of those in here. And then the last plant is Superbena Sparkling Amethyst, which I think is brand new this year, right? Didn't you use that last year? I used year? it last year. It was awesome I last year, though. I had a chance though. to use it last year, yeah. It intermingled mm -hmm. beautifully with the yeah. Bordeaux Supertunia. That's what I put it with. But, oh my gosh, isn't that, like, that's that is nice, beautiful. That's a nice recipe. Like, if this, sur like, survives and does really well together, that one's bent, um, I would consider doing this kind of blend in our pots along the fence line. Oh. Yeah, that's how much I like it, because I like purple. I fertilized all of these plants this morning before they came here today. Oh, that is beautiful. I like that a lot, a lot. That's so pretty. All right, plant number one. Uh, why do I want to call every single plant a Supertunia? <laughs> is it your favorite plant? No, oh. well, maybe. I really like the um, sparkling amethyst. What's that one? The, the superbena. Superbenas. Uh -huh. Those are really nice. That's kind of grown on me. Anyway, this is a coleus, and this is uh, Color Blaze Torchlight, which is new, right? I think it's new. Um, the picture shows that it's got really interesting margins. Which it probably does in more sun. I imagine it has more interesting color. Well, it's going to get plenty of sun here. Yeah. So, and because I know that they get big, but they also grow upright. They grow really tall, and I, I just feel like three will look good here. You know what? This is rich, because you just got after me about putting three coleus in one of my pots. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe maybe you're rubbing off on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we'll do three of these. Okay, next plant. Looks good already. Is Supertunia Sharon, which I have never planted. Have you? I planted some last year by the arbor that had the big concrete pots. I put purple fountain grass and Supertunia Sharon really? and raspberry rush. I don't remember it. Oh, I just spent a long time trying to explain that. <laughs> well, it's a double and... It's sweet. We'll see what it does. I'm, I'm just interested to see what, how well that one performs. Uh, how big does that get? Mm, six to 12 inches tall and 12 to 18 inch spacing. Hmm. And then uh, Supertunia trailing rose veined. 
I really like this. This one did really well last year in one of my containers, I think. Well, along with Lobularia, like Blushing Princess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know this what? one should be I, good. When I was planning what I wanted to do in my pots, I actually picked all those plants and I'm like, boy, that's going to be beautiful. And then I realized you had done it already. Oh, really? Yes. I completely forgot. I'm going to do I'm gonna do more plants in this one. Are you? This is going to be... This is a container a la Laura? Yeah. Okay. Do you like to plant plants? You know what? You want to face it so that the don't. trailing part is more out like that. Okay. And then fill in. You want me to do it? Okay. So you're not a fan? No, it doesn't really do a whole lot for me. The planting. I love the plants. I love seeing them grow, but the actual planting isn't like... Does okay. that make me a bad person? You're good at lots of other things. Oh! <laughs> knee injury. Future. Last container, container number 10. I'm using a fireworks penicetum in the center. And in my experience, they don't get as big as the purple fountain or the skyrocket. And they've got really nice pink variegation. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll look very pretty with the plants that I picked out for this planter. The three plants I'm using are Super Tunia Bordeaux, Super Bina Royale Plum Wine, and Super Bell's Yellow Chiffon. Oh, nice. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. So I'm just hoping that this one can stand up to the other two. That's like a mini limoncello. Yeah. I did one year in these containers, two years ago, I did Bordeaux and limoncello and that was so pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I need to set these all out, huh? Uh-oh. Wind is picking up a bit. I'm thinking of just doing this amount, just yep. knowing how big the other ones grow. Sure. That'd be pretty. Yeah. I don't know what it is about the super beanas, but like I'm wishing that I would have picked more of those. Did you use any? I don't think I did at all. Well, but last year I didn't use any red. And this year I used more I red, used more but red. didn't use super. So next year, just plan on all mine being super, super venas. venas. I used three different kinds of super bina. Okay, let's get these all lined up and then I'll take you guys through. I'll let you know like pot number one, two, three, four, like last year. And we would love you to vote on your favorite ones. The ones that you think are gonna be the most glorious. Mine are the even numbered ones. There we go. All right, we're all done. Got all 10 containers potted. The wind is starting to pick up. I didn't know we were supposed to get any kind of storm. I'm hoping that it doesn't get any worse than this. Uh, but I wanna show you all of these containers lined up in a row before we start placing them around. They always look so impactful when they're all clustered together. And then we'll throw a number up on the screen and you guys can vote. We would love for you to vote on which ones you like the best. So like you can put just one number or like top three or whatever. So here we go. Starting with Aaron's, give you a good look. Pot number one. Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, Vista Silverberry, and Vista Fuchsia. And then here's mine, pot number two. Play in the Blue Salvia as a centerpiece, Supertunia Honey, Superbell's Red, and Superbell's Tropical Sunrise. Aaron's container with the Red Hot Poker, the Flambe, Superbell's Dream Sickle, I think. And Superbell's Really Red. And then this one has the Coleus Wicked Hot, Superbell's Honey, Super, no, Supertunia Honey, rather. Super Bell's Coralina and Peachy Keen Superbina. Then we've got Purple Fountain Grass, Super Bell's Cardinal Star, Super Tunia Black Cherry, and Snow Princess Lobularia. Next one is Skyrocket Penicetum in the center with Super Tunia Bordeaux, Vista Fuchsia, and Black Cherry. And then this one here has got the singular, <laughs> that looks so funny to me, a Truffle of Pink Gumfrina. Super Tunia Royal Magenta, Super Tunia, was it Pink Star and Violet Star? That'll be really fun to watch. Skyrocket Penicetum, Super Binia, oh, Super Bina, not Binia. Sparkling Amethyst, Super Bell's Great Punch, and the Ultraviolet Lobelia. Oh, that's so beautiful. Not biased at all. And then we've got Torchlight Coleus, surrounded by Super Tunia Sharon cute little fluffy bloom there and super tunia trailing rose veined and last but not least is the fireworks penicetum super tunia bordeaux super bina royal plum wine and super bells yellow chiffon just look at them right there aren't those just so pretty and happy i'm just really thrilled 
if you just take a little walk here, just really thrilled how they all look, right? Even from the beginning, even as babies. And that's it, you guys, for today's project anyway. We do hope to come down and give you some updates as the season progresses. Um, and that way, it's interesting because sometimes your favorite container in the beginning turns out to be not so much your favorite later on based on how they grow together. And that's how I learn the best. I learn the best just by doing stuff and either succeeding at it or failing at it and then trying to do better the next time I do the project. So anyway, we are going to come back down here and set them all up with the budworm spray and um, fertilizer. So they've got everything they need to take care of these. And I'm just really thrilled for everybody to be able to enjoy these. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video today and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.